dad was always a hero. In World War II, my dad flew over 11 different types of aircraft. He had 162 missions. Throughout history, there have been some seriously mysterious events that still don't have clear answers. Trying to understand why an experienced captain would do the one thing that really is unthinkable, which is to leave your vessel. An experienced person would do it only if he thought the vessel was going down. From missing treasure and vanishing planes, here are some of the weirdest events that no one has answers to. One, mysterious plane wreck. Mike Barnett and Jimmy Gamsky, two shipwreck hunters, are always on the lookout for interesting mysteries to solve, often relying on local stories for leads. On this occasion, they were exploring a mysterious underwater site known as Chong's Wreck, located about 57 nautical miles off the coast of Florida, near the infamous Bermuda Triangle. The two were hoping that this wreck might be connected to a series of plane crashes that occurred more than 60 years ago. Back in 1960, the USS Saratoga, a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier, was having a rough time in these waters. On July 26th, a strategic bomber approaching the Saratoga for a practice run crashed into the sea just a mile away from the flight deck, killing the pilot, William C., and his two crew members. Then, three days later, another plane, the same type, came in for a landing on the Saratoga, but crashed into the flight deck, killing three more people. These were A3 Sky Warrior jets, which were capable of carrying nuclear bombs. Both planes went down in deep water and were never recovered, with their exact locations lost to time. But it was believed they could be somewhere near Chang's wreck. On their dive, Mike and Jimmy didn't have a lot of time, only 25 minutes to explore the wreck, as they were diving about 240 feet down. But they soon spotted something intriguing. They first noticed part of a plane's wing, followed by an engine mount. Then they came across what looked like the cockpit, which had split off from the rest of the wreck. They didn't find any human remains, which added to the mystery. After their dive, Mike and Jimmy met with Jason Harris, a pilot and combat veteran, and military historian David O'Keefe, to review the footage they had captured. Based on the size of the wreck and the way the engines had detached, they quickly identified the plane as an A3 Sky Warrior. The cockpit was a key clue. It had a unique design, which made it clear this was one of the planes from the Saratoga but they still weren't sure if it was the plane flown by Captain Clyer or the one piloted by Commander Charles T. F. R. The team then tracked down a key witness, Phil Will Coxon, who had served on the USS Saratoga and had actually seen the crash of Commander F. R.'s plane. Phil had even come into possession of a video that was shot during the crash, giving the team an incredible piece of evidence. The footage showed the plane trying to land, but something went wrong with the tail hook causing the plane to crash into the water. You could see the pilot struggling to regain control, but it was clear that the plane wasn't going to make it. After this discovery, Mike and Jimmy made a second dive to Chang's wreck to investigate further. This time, they found more clues, including part of the plane's wing with the tip broken off and some parachute material still floating around in the current. These signs confirmed that the wreck was indeed from Commander FR's plane. The team then traveled to Jacksonville to meet with Commander FR's sons and show them the footage of the wreck. This moment brought a lot of closure to the family, as they now knew exactly where their father's plane had come to rest. Want to see more videos on mysterious events? Like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this. We've got a lot more where that came from. 2. The Mary Celeste One of the most mysterious stories of a shipwreck comes from a ship called the Mary Celeste. The story is so strange that people often link it to the Bermuda Triangle, though it's not exactly clear why. On December 4, 1872, a ship called the Mary Celeste was found drifting in the Atlantic Ocean, with no crew aboard and no signs of what had happened to them. The ship had set off from New York and was on its way to Genoa, Italy, carrying a cargo of raw alcohol. On board, there were seven crew members, Captain Benjamin Briggs, his wife, and their two-year-old daughter. But days later, a British ship called the De Gradia spotted the Mary Celeste floating in the Atlantic near the Azores Islands. The ship's sails were still up, but there was no one on board. The lifeboat was missing and the ship was eerily abandoned. The cargo seemed untouched except for nine barrels of alcohol, which were mysteriously empty. Even stranger, a sword was found lying on the deck, but there were no signs of a struggle, no sign of a pirate attack, and no trace of the people who had been on board. 
The fact that everything else, including the crew's personal belongings, was still there, ruled out a pirate attack or robbery. If pirates had attacked, they likely would have taken the valuable items too, but everything was left behind. Over the years, people have come up with many theories to explain what happened. Some have suggested a criminal conspiracy, while others have even joked about alien abductions or an attack by a giant squid. But those ideas don't really make sense. More realistic theories included the possibility of a natural disaster, like an undersea earthquake, or even the idea that the ship had somehow drifted into the Bermuda Triangle, an area known for strange disappearances. But the more you think about it, the more odd it seems. Why would a skilled, experienced crew, in good weather, aboard a perfectly fine ship, suddenly abandon it and then disappear without a trace? The Mary Celeste story remains one of the most baffling mysteries of the sea. To this day, no one knows exactly what happened to the people on board or why they vanished without a trace. 3. The Voynich Manuscript The Voynich Manuscript is one of history's biggest mysteries, a strange handwritten book that has stumped experts for centuries. People who've tried to crack its secrets include scholars, cryptographers, and even amateur puzzle solvers, but no one has figured it out yet. This mysterious book is thought to have been created sometime in the early 1400s between 1404 and 1438, most likely in Central Europe, maybe Italy. Scientists have carbon dated its pages, which are made of vellum to confirm it's from that time period, but who made it and why, nobody knows. The manuscript is about 240 pages long, though some pages are missing. What makes it so unique is the script, known as Voynichesi. It's unlike anything else. It doesn't match any known language or writing system. The book is also full of colorful drawings of plants, strange diagrams that look astronomical, and even naked women in odd settings. The text reads from left to right, and it's divided into sections that seem to focus on topics like plants, astronomy, biology, and even medicines. But without understanding the writing, it's hard to say for sure. The book's modern story began in 1912, when a book dealer named Wilfred Voynich bought it from a Jesuit college near Rome. Once people got a look at it, they were hooked by its mystery. Before Voynich owned it, the manuscript had passed through some interesting hands. One of its most famous owners was Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II, who was so intrigued by it that he reportedly paid a fortune to get it. Other known owners included Jacobus Horsiki de Tipenex and Johannes Marcus Marzi, both historical figures connected to science and learning in their time. The illustrations add to the manuscript's mystery. Some seem to show plants, but they don't match any known species, while others appear linked to medieval ideas about astrology and health. Recent theories even suggest some of the drawings might touch on subjects like reproduction and conception topics that were often tied to both medicine and superstition in medieval times. Cracking the Voynich Manuscripts code has become almost like a game for cryptographers, historians, and hobbyists alike. Many experts, including top cryptographers from World War I and II, have tried to decode it, but no one has succeeded. Theories about what it contains vary wildly. Some think it's written in a natural language that's been cleverly encoded. Others believe it's a made-up language, or even a hoax designed to fool people into thinking it's meaningful. And then there are those who think it's just gibberish, pretty to look at, but ultimately meaningless. Interestingly, some modern researchers have used statistical analysis to study the text, and the results suggest it might actually follow patterns similar to real languages. This has led to new theories, including the idea that the manuscript may involve multiple writers or a mix of different encoding techniques. But despite all the high-tech tools and clever minds working on it, the Voynich manuscript remains unsolved. 4. Peking Man The story of the Peking Man bones is one of the greatest mysteries in science, and it all centers around their sudden disappearance during World War II. These fossils were incredibly important for understanding human evolution, yet they vanished without a trace, leaving everyone wondering what happened. Peking man, officially called Homo erectus pekinensis, was found in the 1920s at a site called Zhou Kudian near Beijing, China. This was a major find for scientists as the site contained bones from around 45 individuals, along with tools and signs that these ancient humans used fire. These fossils, dating back between 780,000 and 400,000 years, 
were a big deal because they helped us learn about how early humans lived, evolved, and even interacted with their environment. Now, fast forward to 1941. World War II was raging, and China was worried about a Japanese invasion. The scientists responsible for the Peking man bones decided it would be safer to send them to the United States for protection. They carefully packed the fossils into crates and handed them over to a U.S. Marine base near Beijing. That was the last time anyone saw them. After that, the trail goes cold. The crates were supposed to make their way to the U.S., but they never arrived. What happened? No one knows for sure, but plenty of theories have popped up over the years. Some people think the crates were buried somewhere during the chaos of war, either for safekeeping or simply forgotten. Others believe Japanese soldiers intercepted the shipment and took the fossils back to Japan, though there's no hard evidence for this. Another idea is that the bones were on a ship that sank during the war. There's even a rumor that the U.S. military secretly has the fossils but isn't telling anyone. The disappearance of the Peking man bones isn't just about a missing artifact. It's about what those fossils could have taught us. For example, researchers have debated whether early humans like Peking man practiced cannibalism. The bones might have provided clues to answer that question. They could also have helped scientists study how early humans heard sounds, which might have shed light on the origins of spoken language. With modern technology like CT scans, we could have learned so much more from those fossils. Despite many attempts to find them, the bones remain lost. There have been searches, including one in 2005 led by local authorities in China, but nothing has turned up. It's frustrating because these fossils aren't just a scientific treasure, they're also a reminder of how fragile our historical artifacts can be, especially in times of war. 5. Where is Alexander the Great? The question of where Alexander the Great was buried has confused people for over 2,300 years. Even though many have tried to find his final resting place, no one knows for sure where it is. Alexander, one of the most famous conquerors in history, died in Babylon on June 10, 323 BCE, when he was just 32 years old. After his death, there was some drama over where to bury him. His body was preserved, and his generals debated his final resting place. Eventually, one of them, Ptolemy Expert Soter, took charge. He brought Alexander's body to Egypt, first stopping in Memphis and later moving it to Alexandria, a city Alexander had founded during his conquests. There, it was placed in a grand tomb called the Soma that became a famous landmark. At first, Alexander's tomb was a big deal. People from all over came to see it, including Roman emperors, who treated it like a pilgrimage site. But over time, the tomb started to fade into obscurity. It was looted at least a few times, including by Cleopatra VII, who reportedly took gold from it to fund her military campaigns. By the late 300s CE, things got even worse. Riots, earthquakes, and other disasters in Alexandria seem to have caused the tomb's exact location to be lost. By the time we get to the 16th century, there are no clear records of anyone knowing where it was. There are a lot of theories about where Alexander's tomb might be, most people think it's still somewhere in Alexandria, maybe buried beneath the modern city. Others believe Alexander might have wanted to be buried in the Siwa Oasis, a place he visited and held sacred after consulting the Oracle of Ammon there. Some think his tomb might not even be in Egypt. A sarcophagus found in Sidon was once linked to him, but most experts don't buy that theory. Then there's a wild idea that Venetian merchants took Alexander's remains by mistake during the Arab conquest of Alexandria, thinking they belonged to St. Mark, whose body they brought to Venice. Over the years, more than 140 documented searches have been made to find Alexander's tomb, but no luck so far. Archaeologists continue to dig in Alexandria and other places, hoping to uncover this lost piece of history. For now, though, the tomb of Alexander the Great remains one of the world's greatest mysteries leaving us to wonder if it will ever be found. 6. Roanoke Colony's Disappearance The story of the lost colony of Roanoke is one of the oldest mysteries in American history, and people have been trying to figure out what happened to the settlers for centuries. Back in 1587, a group of 117 men, women, and children set up a colony on Roanoke Island, which is in what's now North Carolina. They were led by Governor John White, who went back to England to get more supplies. Unfortunately, his return was delayed for three years because of the Spanish Armada and other problems. When he finally made it back in 1590, the colony was completely empty. 
There weren't any obvious signs of what had happened to the colonists, but there were a couple of clues. White found the word Croatoan carved into a post and the letters CRO etched into a tree. It seemed like the settlers might have moved to Croatoan Island, now called Hatteras Island, which wasn't far from Roanoke. But when White looked for them there, he didn't find anyone. Over the years, many theories have popped up about what happened to these people. One idea is that they joined nearby indigenous tribes. There's some evidence to back this up. Archaeologists have found pottery and other artifacts in areas where Native American tribes lived that seemed to match what the colonists would have used. It's possible they split into smaller groups and lived among different tribes to survive. Another theory is that they might have been attacked. Earlier attempts to settle in the area hadn't gone well and had created tensions with some of the local Native American tribes. If those tensions boiled over into violence, it could explain why the settlers disappeared. Then there's the possibility that nature itself was their biggest enemy. Records show the colony was set up during a really bad drought, which would have made it hard to grow food or find fresh water. Add disease into the mix, and the settlers might have scattered in small groups to try their luck elsewhere. 7. Who assassinated JFK? The assassination of President John F. Kennedy on November 22, 1963 in Dallas, Texas, is one of the most talked about events in American history. While the official story blames a single man, Lee Harvey Oswald, for the shooting, not everyone is convinced. Over the years, countless theories have popped up, each claiming to know who might really have been behind it. After the tragedy, the government created the Warren Commission to investigate. In 1964, the commission reported that Oswald acted alone. They said he fired the fatal shots from the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository and found no solid evidence of anyone else being involved, not organized crime, foreign governments, or secret groups. But a lot of people didn't buy it. The idea of a lone gunman seemed too simple for something so massive, and that skepticism only grew as time went on. One big theory involves the CIA. Some people think parts of the CIA might have been involved because Kennedy had clashed with them over issues like Cuba and the Vietnam War. This theory paints Oswald as a scapegoat, someone the agency may have used to carry out the crime while hiding their own role. Another theory points fingers at Kennedy's vice president, Lyndon B. Johnson. Some believe Johnson had a lot to gain by Kennedy's death since it made him president. Supporters of this idea often talk about Johnson's political ambitions and connections to powerful people who might have wanted Kennedy out of the way. Then there's the theory about organized crime. JFK's brother, Robert Kennedy, was cracking down hard on the mafia as attorney general. Some think mobsters decided to fight back by targeting the president. They saw it as a way to get revenge and send a message. 8. Copper Scroll the Copper Scroll is one of the most fascinating finds among the Dead Sea Scrolls. Unlike the other scrolls, which mostly contain religious writings, this one reads like a treasure map. Discovered in 1952 in Cave 3 near Qumran, it's made of copper instead of parchment, and it lists 64 places where treasure, lots of it, is supposedly hidden. According to the scroll, these spots hold huge amounts of gold and silver, possibly worth billions of dollars today. The scroll is written in Hebrew, but its style and wording are different from the other Qumran texts, suggesting it might have a completely unique origin or purpose. It gives detailed instructions about where the treasure is buried, mentioning specific landmarks and amounts of gold and silver. For instance, it talks about over 4,600 talents of precious metals, an amount so massive that many people struggle to believe it could be real. So, what's the story behind this treasure? There are several theories. One idea is that the treasure came from the Second Temple in Jerusalem. When the Romans destroyed the temple in 70 CE, it's thought that someone might have hidden the valuables in secret locations to keep them safe. Another theory connects the scroll to the Essenes, the Jewish group believed to have lived in Qumran. Some researchers think the scroll might reflect their efforts to safeguard community wealth. But not everyone agrees. Some argue that the scroll is just a piece of creative writing or an exaggeration, and that no such treasure ever existed. Even if the treasure were real, finding it is easier said than done. The places mentioned in the scroll are described using ancient names and landmarks that don't make much sense today. Some of these locations might not even exist anymore. 9. Hotel Cecil The Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles is one of those places that seems straight out of a ghost story. 
It opened in 1924 with big dreams of serving business travelers, but over time, its shine faded. Sitting near Skid Row, the hotel became a low-cost spot for struggling folks, and with that came a darker reputation. Over the years, it's been tied to all kinds of strange and tragic events, earning it a reputation as one of the world's most haunted places. One of the most talked about events at the Cecil is the story of Elisa Lamb, a 21-year-old Canadian student. She disappeared while staying at the hotel in February 2013, and for weeks, no one knew what had happened. Then her body was found in one of the rooftop water tanks after hotel guests started complaining about the water. What's even creepier, before her disappearance, she was caught on security footage in an elevator, acting in a strange, erratic way, pressing buttons, peeking out, and moving like she was hiding from someone. Her passing was ruled an accidental drowning, but people still wonder how she got into that water tank and why she was acting so oddly. 10. Ark of the Covenant The Ark of the Covenant is one of history's biggest mysteries. It was built by the Israelites during their journey out of Egypt, around the 13th century BCE, under Moses' direction. The Ark was a gold-covered wooden box that held the Ten Commandments and represented God's presence with the people. It played a big role in important events, like the fall of Jericho, and was kept in the tabernacle before being placed in King Solomon's temple in Jerusalem. The mystery started after the Babylonians destroyed the temple in 586 BCE. The Ark wasn't listed among the items they took, and its whereabouts became a question. Some believe the prophet Jeremiah hid it in a cave on Mount Nebo to protect it. Others think it might have been taken earlier by Pharaoh Shishak, or is hidden somewhere beneath Jerusalem, maybe under the Temple Mount. Over the years, many people have tried to find the Ark, but no one has had any luck. Will these mysteries ever get answered? Are there any other mysteries that we haven't talked about?